Welcome back to halftime here at Super Bowl 51 where the Patriots draw the Atlanta Falcons 21 to 3. Let me tell you a story. Hey, let's go, boys. It's gonna be a hell of a story. It's gonna be a hell of a story. Hell yeah. Julian Edelman knows a good story when he sees one. He made a story. What I say at halftime, it's gonna be a hell of a story. I, I love you, bro. He also knows how to author one. I kind of always dabbled in children's books. I always remember reading Shel Silverstein, and you know, those were the kind of the books that were il with illustrations that I liked. I mean, I'm a dumb football player. Found out I was having a child. I want to say hi to my little baby girl, Lily. I love you. Dad is coming to see you. I wanted to have something that I could, you know, potentially give to her. The book's about a little animal named Jules the Squirrel. Oh, Jules is the squirrel with the red, red hands. They're supposed to be the gloves. Yeah. Huh? Who sees a bunch of guys playing football outside, and he decides that he wants to go play. You're too weak, says the eagle. You're too slow, says the buffalo. You're too small, says the bear. <laughs> Jules has never felt so sad in his whole life. Little Jules gets all Debbie Downer on himself. He sees this goat practicing. <laughs> hey there, I'm Tom, says the goat. The goat just so happens to be named Tom. Hmm, a goat named Tom. The Patriots have one of them too and he wasn't allowed to play for the first four games of the season. So it appears we have the end of the deflate gate saga, and I have made the difficult decision to no longer proceed with the legal process. To see one of your best friends not get to suit up and play with you over something we won't get into, but, you know, that, that's, it's kind of, you know, you get that if feeling like that's some, that's some, ugh, you know, ugh. To the end line, touch and go what we need you know coach Belichick's a machine yeah because you're not right you can't run fast same thing that happens in the game he'll get up in front of the team announce what happened and we're moving on and obviously this one was a little different than a lot of the other things that we've gone through but coach Belichick has a mindset where I can't waste my time on something I can't control with the goat MIA the Patriots relied on a battering man Give to Blunt, he rambles up the middle, and then he puts oh, it. forward, driving the ball oh, oh. to the end zone! Touchdown, Patriots! Hey, yeah, that's all it was, boy. Garoppolo dropping back, looking to throw. Lobs it down the left side, Hogan wide open, has it at the 10 inch drive! Goodbye! Brady's backup, Jimmy Garoppolo, won his first start. And in his second, he threw three touchdown passes in the first 17 minutes. On the money! But he left the game with a shoulder injury. Everybody on the team was like, dang, my starter, gone for four weeks. We just lost Jimmy. When you see your backup quarterback go down and it's just like, man, it, that's, it's gonna be one of those seasons. But you gotta put in your mindset, you know, the train's gotta keep moving. Patriots down to the third quarterback. Doesn't matter, the train keeps rolling. Usually the LeGarrette Blunt Express runs north and south but occasionally he veers off track. I'm like, okay, this is my chance. I don't really get these tosses, so in order for me to get some more, I gotta make something out of it. LeGarrette Blunt, try to get outside, he does. To the 25, Ooh. he hurdles over the man to the 40-yard line. I ain't no big boy can jump like that. He, he, show, he showed me something new. Number 41, I just seen him dip his head down. Whenever they dip their head and turn the head, they're not wanting to hit you. I just jump over him, and I just seen another guy coming, and <laughs> Instead of just running straight down the sideline, I just look at him and I turn towards him and I go try to run him over. Like <laughs> the Florida native has been running over NFL defenders since his days as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He pounds off right guard into Packer territory, dragging Packers with it. He's on his feet to the 35. He runs over another guy in green. Got a block to the right 20. Look, Garrett Blunt refused to go down. I've seen a run multiple times. It's posted everywhere. And somebody just posted it on Instagram on some kind of NFL highlights page. Obviously, you're not expecting to break all those tackles. You just keep your legs moving, keep your legs moving, keep your legs moving. Just make sure whenever y'all do y'all top 10 greatest runs in NFL history, put that on there, please. <laughs> I've always wanted to be an NFL player. Where I grew up at, Barry is a, is a small, small place. And they've had a lot of good athletes come through. My dad being one of them. 
And every game I played, it was always, man, you ain't gonna never be better than your daddy, boy. Got into high school, no matter how good of a season I had, I just kept on hearing it, kept on hearing it. To this day, I can go home right now and talk to some of the people and they'll still tell me, boy, you're half as good of an athlete as your dad was. I used to race him growing up. I could never beat him, never. When I got 14, he said, you think you could beat me? I'm like, yeah, I feel like I could beat you right now. He said, go. And I'm running. And when I, and when I see myself catching him and I got beside him, I said, oh yeah, this the one. I'm gonna never race him again after this. And I got past him and I beat him. Another give to LeGarrette, across the 40 to the 35, 30, he breaks away. Now when I break these long runs and stuff, after the game, I get a phone call from him and I'll be like, what you think, how'd I do? He was like, oh, I know. Once you got past the last one, they ain't gonna catch you. You know what I'm saying? He respect the speed now. So <laughs> I got around the edge and I almost run into Julian. So I kind of like dip a little bit. I just see a guy like, true, like I see a guy like get pancaked. Boy, he ended oh, up Jackson. taking him down. Just ended up pancaking him. I can honestly say he's one of the best blocking receivers in, in the NFL. Now, there's no saying the more you can do through my time here, I'd hear guys like Brewski, K. Falk. They always say, "Hey, the more you can do." Great job, man. Let's go, let's go, buddy. It's kind of a mentality. Hey, do your job. You just do your job. Blunt did his job in September. He was the AFC's Offensive Player of the Month, and despite playing with backup quarterbacks, New England started the season three and one, which was bad news for the rest of the league because the goat was ready to return. After the game, Jules. <laughs> After the game, Jules sees a goat still on the field practicing. Hey there, I'm Tom. Says the goat. The Tom character brings little Jules under his arm. Good job, Jules. You okay. Yeah. And kind of shows them what you have to do, because it wasn't an easy road for the goat. You have to work hard, says Tom. Working hard leads to success. In early October, Tom Brady returned to work after a four-game suspension. It was cool to see him. We haven't seen him in four weeks. We weren't allowed to contact him. I think he may have been in Italy getting pictures of himself, like, taken, like, naked and stuff. I don't know, but, you know, he must have had his football out there, you know, eating spaghetti and throwing footballs. You know, that's, that's what he does. If the, if the spaghetti doesn't have tomatoes, because he doesn't eat tomatoes, so, or gluten, or... I don't know. He came in and, uh, and, he, and he gave everybody hugs, and, and his face started turning red because everybody was looking at him. I may have gave a Brady chant. I don't know. I don't remember. Brady's first game was in Cleveland. Fittingly, the GOAT's first completion went to the squirrel. Drops back, looks right, throws it right for Edelman. Catch at the 25. His go-to guy to get it started. Julian Edelman was targeted a career-high 159 times in 2016. Clearly, he and Brady have a special relationship. I'd say it's like two dolphins. We got sonar. You know where Flip's at? He skips over here, flip and skip. We're just throwing sonars off each other. I made that one up off the, off the dome. I didn't know where I was going with it for a while. I was... Uh, Peas and carrots? Peas and carrots. Brady knew exactly where he was going with it in Cleveland. He fires deep down the right side, looking for Hogan behind the defense. Oh, like, damn. I mean, I, I know this, I mean, that's TV, but you don't just miss four games and then come out and just throw for one of yards like that. And whatever he was on, man, I guess I need to jump on that too. It might have been the avocado ice cream. Avocado ice cream. It's not that bad either. It's not that bad. And the guy didn't play first four games. First game he comes back, he throws for 406 yards. That's goatish. That's that's the goat. Fans in New England have been marking their calendars with this day. Yep, and here he comes. The places erupting. He had this look in his eye. He always has that look, but it was different this time. He, he had a, a posture like, they want to suspend me for four games for something I didn't do? Like, we're going to see who's going to get the last laugh at the end of this season. There's not many games you don't see that face. You know Brady, because that's when he comes trotting out with Jimmy. And he goes and does his little fist pump. That's when, you know, you start tightening up them gloves a little more. Buckle it up. It was go time. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, come on. 
Brady threw for 376 yards and three touchdowns in the lopsided win. And Dante Hightower, who missed two of the first five games himself with an injury, also had a big day. That was probably my favorite game plan, you know, the whole year. Snap to Dalton Lake, what's are coming, Hightower has him in the end zone, throws him down for a safety. You know, anytime I get dialed up to blitz or come off the edge or blitz up the middle or just any way to be destructive, I'm always down for it. Dante Hightower Parkway. Hightower first made a name for himself in his hometown of Lewisburg, Tennessee. At the University of Alabama, he won two national championships. Since high school, he's only played under head coaches Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. So it's no surprise he has a high football IQ. I'm very lucky and blessed. It's worth it, but it's, it's been hell. To, and, I'd, and I'd be lying if I said anything different. Nick and Bill obviously were real close friends and they coached together in Cleveland. If we don't play our ass off, they'll beat us. Oh, I agree. It doesn't surprise me of, you know, how much success they have whenever you look and see how much those guys live, breed, and, you know, die football. Pull out all the stops. They're literally the exact same. In 2016, Hightower was selected as a team captain. His locker was moved to a more prominent spot where previous linebacking greats had dressed. He earned it. He earned to be in that category of... Guys that sat there, guys like Mayo, Willie, Baruski, guys that work hard, love the game, do anything for the team. It's definitely an honor, but I'm not Willie Mack, I'm not Mayo, I'm not, I'm not Teddy, I'm not Vrabel, I'm not any of those guys. The best thing I can do is be me. Hightower has a habit of being in the right spot at the right time. He proved that in his first NFL game in 2012. Pounding into the end zone, touchdown by Dante Hightower. In Super Bowl 49, it was his game-saving tackle on Marshawn Lynch that set the stage for Malcolm Butler's interception on the next play. His name even showed up in an episode of Orange is the New Black. I thought it was pretty dope getting a little recognition out there like that. Now, let us imagine this is a diminutive lady inmate and not uh, Don't the Hightower over here. <laughs> you know, the way that they pronounced it, I don't know if it was a joke or what it was, Learning Hightower's name is something even those close to him have to do. You know what his real first name is? Mm -mm, but you need to tell me. It's not D O N T A? Q U A L I N. Oh, my goodness. My first name is Quaylen. Qualin? It's not Qualin, it's Quaylen. Oh, he's done. Qualin from now on. Quaylen. I'm going to hashtag that immediately after I get out of this interview. You can't even find this on, like, Wikipedia. That's kind of a cool name. In Pittsburgh, they're familiar with the name Blunt. LeGarrette was a Steeler in 2014, and before he even played in a regular season game, he was making headlines. The Steelers running backs Le'Veon Bell and LeGarrette Blunt have been charged with marijuana possession following a traffic stop. In November of 2014, after he left the field before a game was over, the Steelers released Blunt. The Patriots signed him. In the AFC Championship, he scored three touchdowns and he helped New England win Super Bowl 49. In his return to Pittsburgh, Blunt ran for 127 yards. LG, keep running that rock, baby. And I love it. He scored two touchdowns to bring his total to eight in seven games. Phenomenal rushing game by LeGarrette Blunt. The following week, Julian Edelman scored his first touchdown of the season. Come on, Jules! Come on, Jules! He's caught, lunges toward the goal line. He's in! Yeah. Good job, baby. Good job, bud. Is that your first one this year? At 7 and 1, the Patriots had the best record in football. But as they headed into their bye week, their head coach was about to make a shocking decision. There was an old wise owl. You guys would like that when you see the book. Does that not look like Bill? Am I tripping? All right, make sure I'm not tripping. He got on the hoodie. He got on the headset. I'm assuming sleeves are probably cut. This is 100% Bill. 
We didn't say no names there, but let's just say it's an old wise owl. The wisdom of Bill Belichick was questioned by many when midway through the season he traded linebacker Jamie Collins, who was second team all pro in 2015, to Cleveland for a conditional draft pick. The best defensive player we got, the most athletic guy on the team, is business. It's more of a business than it is football, so. Um, I don't know why it happened the way it did. I think it's kind of like, holy shit, I can't believe that just happened. A lot of guys didn't agree with it. All guys didn't agree with it. I don't think nobody did. You never know what Bill is thinking. But I know that every decision and every move that he makes, he always makes it for the best interest of the team. There's a reason why he's been so successful in, in what he's done. And, I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with it. Everyone's, like, looking around, like, am I next? Like... <laughs> You just never know. Job security might not be an issue for everyone in New England. And in a rematch of Super Bowl 49, it was LeGarrette Blunt who showed his value to the Patriots. It's outside to the two, to the five, touchdown! Good job, Bill! Blunt scored three touchdowns, including this one-yard run in which he took 30 steps. To the end zone, and LeGarrette Blunt still on his feet, yeah. punching to the right, he's in! Touchdown, Patriots! We'll call that Blunt Force Trauma. It ended up being a, a, a brand of mine. You know, we copyrighted it. Now we have shirts, hoodies, you know, coffee mugs, backpacks, hats, the whole nine yards. Blunt Force. You see my guy hurtling over somebody, right? <laughs> Blunt's leap, with less than a minute remaining, came up short. And like Super Bowl 49, this game ended with drama in the end zone. Fourth and goal to go, down seven for New England. Made back corner of the end zone, left, contact. There will be no call. What? Are you kidding me? I was basically just saying, like, are you serious? That's a flag. They were just telling me, like, he's stumbling, he was tripping. And I'm like, no, that's not what the case was. There's no possible way he can guard him. We got back in the film room and watched it. Grunk tried to put a move on him, and his feet kind of get tangled, and he started falling. I was in the wrong. The official was right? He was right. He was right. But uh, you got to plead the case in the game. I'm trying to win an Oscar. I'm <laughs> a home loss is rare for the Patriots. Even more rare for Tom Brady and Julian Edelman is going home to play. But in week 11, the California kids face their hometown team. Redwood City, Bay Area, Peninsula kid through and through. Playing for the Redwood City 49ers too. It was just a huge part of my life. Exact same uniform. Said we had RC on the side. Pignotti looks to pass as a receiver there. Edelman, who else? I love the Niners growing up. I had two dogs, Dwight and Montana. To get to go out and put a show on in front of a lot of friends, a lot of family. A homecoming for Brady and Edelman. It was so cool. I think I had like 30 tickets or something. In 2016, Edelman had a career-high 1,106 receiving yards and scored a career-long 77-yard touchdown. Edelman makes the grab and he spreads across the 35 40. I was hoping, like, I was stretching out my back, like, I hope this guy doesn't get me before Mike's there. Julian with a oh, back, it's a great ball by Floyd! And Mike lays him out. Floyd with the block! He was like, am I home free? Goodbye, Julian! Garrett Blunt also had career highs in 2016, rushing for 1,161 yards and a team record 18 touchdowns. Yeah, boy, that's a blood force charm off the right side. The Patriots won their final seven games of the regular season to finish 14-2. Touchdown, Patriots! And even without Jamie Collins, their defense excelled. How about this defense on the road in Denver? They're having fun, they're making plays. Patricia Belichick got them playing exactly the way they wanted to play. That's what I'm talking about! That's what I'm talking about! Twice in the last three weeks, they didn't give up a touchdown. And they finished the season with the fewest points allowed in the NFL. Now that might be the only stat that I care about that was big for us. Despite their dominance, New England still had some hard-stopping moments. But Garrett Blunt caused one of them. I know when I reverse field, I'm running this way, and he look at me, and I'm look at him, and I just turn around, and I'm like, go. And, and he take off running, and I'm just thinking, please, nobody hit him. 
everybody on the sideline would be fine with Tom just going to the sideline and sitting down. When I get behind him, I'm like this, my hands on his back, so it looked like I'm trying to guide him to block somebody, and guys are just running around him. He come out of there unscathed, and I feel like that's definitely 100% of respect him. 100% of respect him. Most of Blunt's runs weren't so roundabout. On and off the field, he now seems to prefer the straight and narrow path. Touchdown, Patriots! Congratulations. I appreciate it. Most oh, supporter you, the man you are. Yes, sir. How much you've grown to become who you are. Appreciate it, Jack. All day, Jack. Jack, he's our team chaplain. I've matured a lot. You know, um, I've learned how to handle, you know, um, certain situations a lot better. I just got myself around all the right people. LG, we need you. Need you, LG. I love him. And, um, he's like the cool dude in school. You know, everybody wanted to be around. Everybody wanted to be around LG. I just to let you know I'll block for you for my whole life, bro. All day, bro. I appreciate it, man. I love you, bro. You have to transform yourself. You have to grow. You know, you can't stay the same person for seven years or else you won't be successful in this league. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, thank you. Merry Christmas. Jules, the squirrel, goes back and starts training harder and catching more balls, doing drills, and, and having that relentless attitude. There's a lot of Jules the squirrel in Dion Lewis, who tore his ACL in 2015 and missed the first nine games of 2016. Worked his tail off to get back. He's like a little flea, and he just like can stop on a dime. He bounces off the surface. Against the Texans, Lewis became the first player in a playoff game to score touchdowns rushing, receiving, and on a kick return. <laughs> Lewis's breakout performance was a welcome sight for Julian Edelman. Seeing Tom Brady throw a block on an end around definitely was not. He lives for that block. I don't know why. I'm like, bro, get down and get out of the way. Stop with the skiing and stop with the blocking. I don't want to have to talk about it again. No waterfalls, just distribute the football. In the win against the Texans, Brady found Edelman eight times for 137 yards, as number 11 became the Patriots' all-time leader in postseason receptions. Edelman yeah. makes the grab at the 30. You know, you got Edelman pushing off a lot. Edelman pushing off a lot. When you went that way, you shoved off a little too much. Okay. But he put his, he engaged on me. I know, but you expect if he If he engages on me, it says in the rule book, I can hit his arm off. That's right, you can hit his That's arm off. That's what I did, I was like, Dad, well, I'm just. To, I didn't, I didn't yeah, I know, throw a yeah, flag, yeah, okay? I know. I'm just telling yeah. you, you're real close. So I get so defensive, him. I'm sorry. Don't do that, though. My he's therapist, so, he's sensitive, man. my therapist yells at me for that. The following week in the AFC Championship, Edelman's witty banter continued. Nip, baby, nip. The fact that you're going to talk about it means you're not. Oh man, these are funny to hear. Yeah. I haven't seen these. You haven't seen any of them? No, I don't watch this. <laughs> Backs up, bouncing on his feet. Looks down the middle, throws down the middle. Touchdown, Edelman! Edelman and Chris Hogan combined for 17 catches and three touchdowns. He tosses it back to Brady and a flea flicker. Got him. He had Mitchell open. He throws it, step for Hogan to the right. Touchdown, Patriots! My dad always used to tell me when I was a young boy. When you got them down, you break their neck. That's what he used to tell me. I was like 12, I'm like, damn. I was like, that's kind of, that's, that's a lot. It's true. That's why I am the way I am, though. What way are you? I don't even know. I, I think I'm still trying to figure that one out. But I think I'm that way. You gotta have that mentality, man. You gotta have that mentality, and I feel like that's the reason why he works so hard. Because when he gets you to that point, he's going to finish you. If there was one play that epitomized that mentality, it came courtesy of LeGarrette Blunt. Gives it to Blunt, runs it to the left side, 15 10. Lowers the shoulders, driving the legs, taking a pie out of the five. Oh, Still on the move. Unrelenting. LeGarrette Blunt to the two. Oh, you got to be kidding me. For him to carry, you know, five or six guys like that. The dude is different. He, he a different breed, man. Blood force trauma! Our guys come out of nowhere and just kind of hit the pile and try to keep on bringing the pile. That was like a little microcosm of how we want our team, I guess. Jumping on the pile, pushing the pile, 
eight dudes in. Let's get nine. Brady, come join us. It's a party. Those types of plays fire you up. It was a statement. After that play, the offensive line was like, man, we were trying so hard to get you in the end zone. That would have been known as one of the greatest touchdown runs in, like, postseason history. They know we're running it. We know we're running it. Who's going to get it? Balls at the one. Blunt in the back. He'll take the hand up. But Garrett Blunt to the end zone. When you can ground and pound a team and, and just break their will, it's, all, it's, it's an awesome feeling. Let it go. The New England Patriots play one more game. Are you happy? I'm not happy. I'm happy. I'll be happy in the The other one. Happy. I know you're happy. I'm a little happy too. He looked at me like the annoying, like the annoying little brother. Yeah, I'm happy, bro. What? Hell of a job, man. One more, coach. One more. You keep it going, buddy. Let's go. Up next, he's like a squirrel. He's always going to get his nut. Oh, that's a catch. The crazy final chapter. It's going to be one hell of a story. For the first half of Super Bowl 51, it looked like there would be no storybook ending for Julian Edelman and the Patriots. In six previous Super Bowl appearances together, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady had never seen their team score a point in the first quarter. I knew that stat. We talked about that going into that game. He would just sit there like, maybe I'm not doing enough coaching good enough in the first quarter. Like, like all week long. And then we don't do it again. Did we score in the first quarter? Oh, my God. The second quarter didn't begin any better. Brady with a handoff to Blunt, runs it left, cuts it upfield, and Jones drives him down, balls loose, and the Falcons seemingly got it. It's like, no. Come on, LG. I had it like this, and it just, with all his might, I don't know if he's a superhuman, full force snatch it, like. Man, I had the sickest feeling in my gut. I'm thinking in my head, like, I know they're finna go score now that I fumbled that ball. I know they're finna go score. Diving into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Points off turnovers. Diving catch, touchdown, Cooper and Atlanta. That's what opened the floodgates, really, bro. I put that on the ground. Like, you know how that, but you know how that, you know, bro, that momentum, bro. I remember that exact quote, you know, I'm like, damn, like. That's what opened, that is, that's what opened the floodgates takes the snap. Four-man rush. He's pressured. He throws down the middle. Pass is picked off. It's coming back to the right. Alfred on the run to the 40. Goodbye. Did you play any worse? To get a pick six, it could have been a dagger. It could have been the dagger. We ain't all right. We're not all right. I mean, like, what the hell is going on? Is there any panic starting to set in at this point? No. No. We got the greatest quarterback of all time. We have the greatest coach of all time. As long as there's time on that clock, I don't think there's no lead that they would feel like we couldn't come back from. We've been in situations where we've been down a lot of points, and I know they haven't been the Super Bowl. It's going to be a hell of a story, and I, I just kept on saying it in the locker room at halftime. Let's go! No game is out of touch. You know, I just kept on thinking, hey, this is going to be a hell of a story. It's going to be a hell of a story. Hell yeah. We're gonna win. Yeah, I do too. Let's let's just play our best half. I don't want anybody to do anything that you can't do. They instill that in you early when you get there. I don't recall ever feeling like we were gonna we were gonna lose that game. I really didn't. We're gonna come back and win this. I said we're gonna come back and get it. We got to. Let's go, boys. It's gonna be a hell of a story. I'm with him. I'm with all the motivation and stuff that you're saying. But I'm I'm like, man, show me. I'm done talking. We've talked enough. Like, it's more about us just going out there and doing what the hell we got to do. Throw down the middle for Edelman, and he dropped it. I was super pissed about that because, you know, you can't be the guy saying it's going to be a hell of a story and then on first third down, drop third down. So I'm over here like, damn, bro, I let my team down. And then they scored. Touchdown, Atlanta. Let's go, L. Let's go show some fight. Come on, now, let's go. He knows the exact moment and the exact time to, you know, 
be vocal. Come on, boys, let's go now. He has like indicators. Got lock in now, laser focus. Oh, if this happened, I know exactly what to say. Play tougher, harder, tougher, everything. Everything we got. When he starts hitting that octave, that high note. Hey, no fear. No fear, cut it loose. That's when you know he's here for some business. Fires left, catch made by White, turns to the inside, dives across the goal line. Touchdown, Patriots! That's how it start right there, all you need is one. And maybe, just maybe, there's the one you need. Let's go now, we've been here, we've been here. Let's go now. We gotta get the ball out. We need to stop right here, bro, right here. No more mistakes, no more bands, there's none of that no more. Everything gotta be perfect. Everything's gotta be perfect. Need a turnover, D. Ryan waits on the step. Backs up. Coming. And Hightower gets to the quarterback. Ball is loose. Patriots sacking Ryan and recovering at the 25. What a terrific blitz by Dante Hightower. He runs right past Devontae Freeman. Matty P uh, made a great call. Matty P is Matt Patricia, who once pursued a career as a rocket scientist. Dante Hightower thinks his defensive coordinator still looks the part. Straight up crazy, mad, mad science, rocket scientist. That's the classic Matty P. If, if when he cuts his beard, I think he loses his swag. He, I mean, Matty P, he ain't got that much swag, but that beard is all his swag. On the game's pivotal play, New England's mad scientist was at his diabolical best. In this one, I was ridiculously wide to the backside of Matt Ryan. Uh, he didn't see me because I was outside. Yeah. So he looked and went. Right yeah, he didn't even see me. By the time he looks at me, I'm just swatting and pushing him to get him out the way. By that time, I'm right at Matt Ryan, and I see him getting ready to let the ball go. So, see ball, get ball. That's when the you gotta believes, and that's when you started believing. Backs up, looks left, throws it for Amendola, touchdown Patriots! Pass will go for two, 5.56 to go here on the fourth. Direct snap to James White, runs up the middle, he's in for two! Damn! Damn! Brady and the Patriots take advantage of the takeaway, and it's a one-score game. Hey, this could get interesting. But I told you, the last five minutes of the game is where the Super Bowl is made. We're getting the OT, it's over with. You got a chance. You have a chance. We got Tom Brady. We got Tom Brady. He the greatest of all time, bro. Hands down, bro. He's almost like not human because I feel like 99.9% .9 of the world would just be so nervous. I have the whole season on my shoulders right now. I make one mistake, it's over for us. I don't know if he even thinks about any of those things. The look in his eyes, you can just tell that he's not worried about messing anything up for us. Let this quarterback get the surgical knife out and let's go. Nobody else you want to have it in his hands. The Patriots are in good hands with Brady. Now football is in good hands with Edelman. Like I was 90% sure. So I'm sitting there like, gotta sell him. It was a catch. Let's go. I got it. 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 We sit over there. I'm like, did he really catch that? He didn't catch that. Like, I'm like, there ain't no damn way he caught that damn ball. I got it. Crazy. No I swear to God. No way. Look at that. Watch. On the ground. No. On the ground. No. They're showing the slow down on, on the jumbo trying. I'm like, bro, he actually caught it. Oh, that's a catch. It don't, it don't get no better than that, man. But I wouldn't expect anybody else to make that catch but Jules. Man, that was crazy. That's crazy, bro. Hey, Jules always come up in the huge moments, though. Oh, my God. That's incredible. We were blessed by the football gods on that one. Gotta believe, bro. Go. Gotta believe. Gotta believe, boy! Tom Brady set Super Bowl records with 466 passing yards and 43 completions. 
James White caught a Super Bowl record 14 of them. And with one minute remaining, Go in. I got this guy. White scored his first rushing touchdown of the entire season. Up the, up the middle, touchdown Patriots! And now the biggest two-point attempt in the history of the Patriots franchise. Now it comes down to this. 57 seconds to go, a two for the tie. Tom takes the step, quick throw to Amendola, screen left. Reaches across the goal line. It's a tie game in Super Bowl 51. I can't believe it. Yeah! Yeah! Don't ever count Tom Brady out. Best ever. Best ever in my book. And we go to overtime here in Houston. First time in Super Bowl history. New England gets to call the toss. Heads. They have called heads. It is heads. New England has won the toss. Ball game. I think everybody kind of knew if we get the ball first, in overtime, it's a wrap. I'm not going to lie. Once we won the toss, I knew we were winning. Let's go score and win, and win this thing, baby. We just climbed over Mount Everest to get back in this game. I had a feeling like they can't stop us now. Go on! Money's on the line. Feed number 11. He will be there in clutch time. We got to get in the end zone, bro. Let's go! Toss sweep white for James White. Cuts it under the right arm. Cuts it upfield. Driving forward. Diving to the goal line. It's good. A touchdown! I ended up falling, screaming like a little girl, all the way across the field. I think it was Malcolm and A.B. coming, running and jumping on me, and I couldn't breathe, but I didn't care. There's no better feeling than than that. And here I come sprinting, you know, full full speed. Probably the fastest I've ever run in my life. I didn't even know that it was getting reviewed. We would have been. I don't know. They got to review it. He full punked me. Full punked my celebration. We were down there for so long, like, was it anybody still on the field, like, waiting for the chain, car to get changed or anything? It's not over! Get off the field! Hey! Is it over? Yes. And they gotta review it. They reviewed it. Did they? Yeah. Oh, my God! Woo! Woo! Gotta believe. Oh, man. No, no. Gotta believe. Ah! Love you, bud. Love you, too, bud. Hell of a job. Super Bowl champ. What's up? You know, me and Matty P been close. Uh, you know, since I got here, he was always one of the guys who demanded a lot from me. And, um, you know, besides me and my family, I don't think anybody else was, was proud of me. Big, play, big time players make big time plays in big time games. That's you! <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you, bro. Unbelievable. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, bro. What are we? Look what we just did. We got that. Yeah. Right. That's the play we needed right there. That was the play, man. Got you, baby. That was it. Are you kidding me? We made a story. What I say at halftime, it's going to be a hell of a story. I, I love you, bro. Describe Tom Brady in one word. Go. 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 He's the GOAT. No question about it. He is the GOAT. I love oh you guys. My God. I love you guys. I love you, baby. Let it go, man. Oh. What a game. Hey, hey. You're the greatest of all time. We're here. Why you're the greatest, and you're the greatest. God. I will never forget saying that. I, I remember that. I remember saying that exactly. You won the Super Bowl again. Huh? You won the Super Bowl again. This is something that you're going to be able to remember for the rest of your life. Maybe you brought them here. It's a lot of Hall of Famers that has never even seen a Super Bowl. Jackie Slater, Matthew Slater. Oh, Slater, how you man. doing, baby? Listen, I, was, I knew that this football team was going to go as far as you and Tom took them. Yes, sir. You did a hell of a job, man. I appreciate I'm it. I'm so proud of you. I appreciate I'm so it. So proud of you. All of you have been through the last few years, man, you, 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 step, you stepped up to the plate yes, and you've earned everything that's happened to you. I appreciate it. We're about to kiss the trophy. I'm tired. about to kiss this trophy. I ain't finna kiss it. Too many lips been on there. Can't kiss it. It's too many hands been on it. Like, they got to sanitize it or something first before I kiss it. I don't know if I really kissed it or not, but I know I hugged it for sure. Oh, there you go. Hug it. For LeGarrette Blunt, man. hugging the Lombardi trophy was a bit easier than hugging his mother. I'm trying to find my mama. I need to find my mama, so. I think she had thoughts that she had to leave right after. 
And so when she, when the game, like when the game was over and we started celebrating and stuff, she, uh, I think she left the stadium. So you outside of the stadium? They found her and brought her inside the little hallway of the stadium where we walk in and she gave me the biggest hug. She started crying, said I love you. Without her, man, she's made a lot of sacrifices for me. How you feeling, Mom? Wonderful. Give up, baby, that's my boy, woo wee yeah! Man, it's always good to, to celebrate with my mom and, you know, again, she's, she's my sword and she's the reason why I'm here. That was probably my favorite hug. I love you, Mom. I love you. How did you do it? We did this. I had no doubt, man. Gotta got believe, Mom. A huge part of the reason I'm at where I'm at is because of my folks. I can't believe it. I know, son. I know. Just hold on to Daddy. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. You know, becoming a father this year. I'm so proud of you. I love you. I love you more than anything in this world, brother. I feel like... I have a lot to live up to, to to be like my folks. The Garrett Blunt is also a father, and his son is ready to follow in or speed ahead of his footsteps. If you go ask him right now, LB, are you faster than your dad? He'll say, yeah, seven years old. He'll, yeah, he'll feel like he can beat me. You'll never beat me in a race, son. <laughs> this is unequivocally the sweetest. I mean, I, I honestly could, I didn't believe it. Even then, like after, you know, we did the, the Lombardi and the confetti, like I, I still didn't believe it. That's stuff you see in a movie. Thank you, baby. Don't give up, keep fighting. But to actually live something that special, like, you, you, you just, you just don't, you don't ever, you don't ever picture yourself in that situation. You gotta believe! Yeah. It was a hell of a story. Jordan runs by the bear, catches the ball over the eagle, jumps and flies high, diving towards the goal line, touchdown. Man, that was one hell of a story. The end. Gotta believe. You gotta believe.